Hi everybody. Well, they say we can start getting back out there, but I would be careful about that. This week we talked to my friend Dr. David Mitchell and Vancouver-based band The Town Pants, who have been helping celebrate our fantastic healthcare workers and getting people together, but maintaining a safe social distance. So if you are going to get out there, please be careful and wear a mask because if nothing else, it makes you look like a really cool doctor. All right, let's get to episode six of the Steve Patterson Project. Welcome back to the Steve Patterson Project. Here we are in the first week of May, so I guess I should start by saying, Mayo the Ciso de Mayo be with you. <laughs> I hope I got them all right. Welcome back to our virtual audience who are here again. Some of them keep coming back week after week since we deliver exactly what you pay for. <laughs> We begin this week in Lethbridge, Alberta, because no other show says that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's, there's actually more. A waitress at the Coco Vanilla Galactic Cantina was dressed in a stormtrooper outfit with a replica Star Wars blaster serving customers in the parking lot to celebrate May the 4th, as you do. Unfortunately, though, some residents who I guess aren't big Star Wars fans and must have thought it was someone from B.C. who had taken an Albertan's job <laughs> called the police who showed up with guns drawn and ordered her to get on the ground. The unfortunate waitress didn't comply, likely because she'd been getting orders wrong all day. So they tackled her to the ground and gave her a bleeding nose. Oh, oh. True story. Oh. Afterwards, the police said they were just doing their jobs, apparently viewing themselves as Jedis. <laughs> <laughs> but now they will likely face lawsuits or even worse, a visit from the waitress's boss. <laughs> Speaking of evil empires, Air Canada told investors <laughs> that in the first quarter of 2020, they lost over $1 billion dollars and my guitar. <laughs> Actually, that last part didn't make it into their financial report, but they did. They did lose my guitar. <laughs> they say that it will take them years to recover after this pandemic is over, or one week once they start charging for everyone's emotional baggage. <laughs> pretty good. That's a pretty good airline joke. Don't you groan at me, Virginia. <laughs> Author Stephanie Meyer has announced that after 13 years, she's finally releasing her latest Twilight book on August 4th. So if you wanted to hunker down with a good book, you will still have to find one. <laughs> <laughs> In response to a request from the Canadian agri-food industry for $2.6 billion in emergency funding, Prime Minister Trudeau announced $252 million in funding, which shows that when you make a written request for money, you need to be sure you put the decimal in the correct place. <laughs> it's a math joke, not a big math crowd. <laughs> in South Korea, the new pro baseball season began this week with players playing in front of empty stadiums. Other sports leagues and sports fans will be watching closely to see how it goes, but they should be warned not to get their hopes up because South Korean baseball is as boring as all other forms of baseball. <laughs> in non-boring news, and perhaps more proof that we are now living in the end times, a new threat has awoken in North America. Murder hornets. <laughs> oh, there they are. Murder hornets. Sorry, alleged murder hornets. It hasn't been proven yet. <laughs> the murder part. They are, they are confirmed to be hornets. Yes. <laughs> These two inches of pure arsehole, which was my exotic dancer name in university, by the way, <laughs> can destroy an entire hive of honeybees in minutes by decapitating them. Great. 
So an insect with the M.O. of a ninja and the temperament of Cersei Lannister is now on the loose. <laughs> Just as we are being given the go-ahead to cautiously go outside. <laughs> I get it, Mother Nature. We've screwed you over nonstop, and now if we try to go out again, you will murder us. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> and finally this week, Back to work protests, or end the lockdown, if you will, were flaring up all across the world and even some in Canada this week. Though there weren't many protesters, some of them were as loud as they could be and had some well-made signs. It is important to remember that they do not speak for many or all Canadians. Here to present his point of view is the president of the Never Go Back to Work Canada Foundation, John Steinberg. Thanks, Steve. You know, when you first invited me to appear on this program, I was concerned because it sounded kind of like work. But then I found out <laughs> I wouldn't be getting paid. And that sounded less like work and more like something I just don't want to do. Uh, okay. Well, well, thank you for overcoming that and doing this anyway, John. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I wasn't always a guy who doesn't want to go back to work. At one point, I was a guy who was at work. <laughs> yes, yes, I assumed that was that was how it works, yes. That's how it doesn't work. Okay, okay, <laughs> semantics. So, uh, what was it? Can you tell us what you used to do? I was a stand-up comedian. I used to make me entertain rooms full of drunk people. And you would assume that's the worst job in the world. But since I've started this organization, I found out there's jobs even worse than that. <laughs> really? Okay. 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 I, I guess I imagine there are people with worse jobs than stand-up comedian. Yes. They're called clowns, Steve. <laughs> they basically like comedians. But they entertain rooms full of sober people. And kids. <laughs> John, I have to say, there, there are worse jobs than being a clown. I guess there's rodeo clowns. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, do you have anything else to say before we go, John? I didn't have anything to say when we started. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point. Okay, that was John Steinberg, everyone telling us why he may never go back to work. <laughs> and that is our monologue for this week. Thanks very much to John Steinberg and of course our virtual audience for joining us again. Thank you so much one more time Yay! for not being here. Yay! Hope to see you next week. Thank you. And it's killing me. All right, let's get to this week's interviews. As we all know, healthcare workers all around the world are doing their utmost to keep us all safe or at least save us from ourselves. Today, I get to chat with an old friend of mine who is a bona fide doctor, even though he doesn't like to be called that, Dr. David Mitchell. But first, musicians Johanna So and Dwayne Keough from the Vancouver-based band The Town Pants had their tour cut short due to COVID, so they found a way to keep the music going while also thanking those hardworking healthcare workers. Let's take a look. Hi there, my name is Dwayne. I'm Johanna. And we are professional musicians uh, on the balcony where we have been performing for a project we started called Songs of Thanks. This is our stage now. <laughs> this is our stage, pretty much, yeah. Vancouver Couple is sharing a little music with their neighbors after their tour was recently cut short. Members of the Vancouver-based band, The Town Pants, were playing in New York State when the coronavirus outbreak took a turn for the worse. They came home, spending two weeks in isolation in Ottawa before completing the journey, where they discover the music didn't need to end. The pair now plays a couple of songs most nights on their balcony in tribute, they say, to healthcare workers, their performance always starting after the 7 p.m. cheers. It was great. Yeah, it was Perfect. awesome. Yeah. That's what I love about the West End. Wow, speechless. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with two thirds of the town pants. Do I have that right? We're missing the third leg. Uh, which there's is actually Dave. five of us. There's five of us. Oh, there's five altogether. Yeah. But tonight we've got uh, Dwayne and Johanna because you're doing the uh, the nightly concerts as part of a salute to the healthcare workers, That's which. Right. Uh, as I understand, 
started organically when uh, Johanna played O Canada on the fiddle. Is that, is that the, was that the first one? Yeah, it was just kind of out of a spur of the moment. You know, everyone's cheering. It had, the cheers had already been going on for several weeks and we had just returned from our canceled tour. And one night I said, well, let's just see if people like having a little bit of music in addition to their nightly cheer time. And the response we got was pretty overwhelmingly supportive. So we just kept going. People like O Canada. <laughs> now, Dwayne, would you have ever come up with this idea on your own? Absolutely you not. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Inventing work that I don't get paid for? No, that's not my bag at all. No, that's, that's, that's sort of my raison d'etre with this show. <laughs> now, I just want to get the history a little bit of the band. So uh, yourself and your brother, Dave, uh, started the band a while back. Johanna joined a little bit more recently. Yeah, three years ago. Mm -hmm. A few years ago. Yep. I can't imagine the band sounding better than it does right now. So is it possible that every band in music could be made better by an amazing female vocalist uh, fiddle player? Well, <laughs> Johanna, to be more specific. Yeah, of course. Yes. Every if, But, you know, there's only a certain amount of Johannas out there, unfortunately. So <laughs> we're just happy we got one, you know. Just so you know, you're supposed to say there's just one. I'm just trying right, to help right, you. Right, 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 right. Let's go back. You two are quarantined together. There's only one. <laughs> uh, let's, get, let's get right down to it. This, this thing that's sort of taken a life of its own, uh, songs of thanks you are you're started to do it you know as organically from from the balcony and uh the 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 response was overwhelming in vancouver why do you think it is in the vancouver community that there's been such a big response to healthcare workers first of all uh and also to what you what you guys are doing after bringing people together at a safe distance i, I think people are just uh entertainment deprived or they're just tired of looking at their screens. So to be able to go out onto your balcony, yeah. sorry to say that, Steve. I, no, it's true. I love what you're doing. It, uh, but, <laughs> but if you could do what you're doing on a balcony, I'm just saying it would open up a few more I could do that. Numbers. We could just start yelling this into my neighborhood. We'd get about the same amount of numbers, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just crazy, you know, to, to be able to hear some live music from your balcony, I think is just so unique. Um, and it's uh, something people are craving. It's some sort of interaction, you know, even yeah. though it's quite distance. But I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible to see the people coming together and looking up. It's kind of a natural stage. It's a little higher stage than you'd be used to, but it's, you know, it's something, to, the acoustics are actually quite great throughout the neighborhood. You can hear it for, for blocks and blocks mm -hmm. and you can, you can see the appreciation in the people. Um, but I know that you've felt a little bit guilty because you're, <laughs> you're kind of reminding people to stay apart while they're while they're getting together, which is tough with Celtic music, yeah. right? We've mm -hmm. been we've been messaging, you know, please stay safe, social distance as much as possible. And we actually joked when we first kind of came away from the first few nights where people started gathering, we were like, Oh my goodness, this sound travels. We're seeing videos, you know, posted from blocks and blocks away where they yeah. can hear us and we're starting <laughs> to realize how far the sound's really carrying. And we went, that was really bold like yeah. who you know we're sort of teasing ourselves like who does that we just plugged into like, a who speaker. just decides they're gonna entertain the neighborhood and now everyone has to listen <laughs> to us we are forcing <laughs> this upon our community yeah, it, it was a bit well, odd is it is it kind of mind-blowing to you too that the, your story and these stories you know there's stories like it around the world but you're doing it every night playing to the neighborhood live but people are tuning in from all over the place and you guys tour all over the place and you were touring in new york when the world kind of came to an end right mm -hmm. yeah i i take i shouldn't say an end a pause we're gonna edit that out the world is still yeah. very much the world going. changed the world changed <laughs> thank you joy see she fixes everything yeah she's um, really great <laughs> do you do you guys have a lot of friends in new york having toured through there so Dude, much yeah a yeah. lot of close connections how, how are they doing down there you know we're we're actually quite lucky we haven't uh I mean, we, we literally know thousands of people in New York State, uh, just because that's probably where the band is the most popular. Right. Um, uh, so, but we've been very, very lucky. I don't know anybody from that state personally that has been uh, sick, as far as I know, at least not uh, no. in, a, in a very uh, large way. 
What message would you guys say to the people who are really missing live music, particularly your concerts? Your concerts are a party and a celebration. Celtic music is the only time my brothers and I hug. Um, we're, <laughs> we're an Irish family, so that's the only time is we link arms and, and then the rest <laughs> of it, we've never, we've never shown emotion. So what would you say to all your fans out there that they can't get to see you live right now? We'll be there when this is over. You know, we're, yeah. we're in it for the long haul. Our music's not going anywhere. Our love of performing isn't going anywhere. And actually this experience has reminded us of that because this pandemic took us away from our jobs and we love what we do. And we were instantly told that we were deemed non-essential, which is a difficult thing for an artist to it's struggle really hard with. on the ego. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but this experience has definitely just reminded us that music is what brings us together. And it's an important form of connection and healing. And it drives us to want to be even better when we are allowed to be back on a stage. Yeah, we didn't know what to do when, when our, you know, when everything, when the world ended. Stop uh, it. We're, in, gonna, we're cutting sorry, that part sorry, out. Cut, 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 <laughs> uh, in March, honestly, we, without all those shows, we were somewhat lost because we had a very big tour planned. I, I, I also love, you, I, I, what I miss most about Dave not being here for this interview as part of his bio was that one of his most interesting traits is his behind. And I wanted to be able to verify that. But it's I, fantastic. We do it joke really about is. him having the best butt it's in the It's incredible. Band. Yeah, it's, I think it's the best <laughs> butt in the business, really. <laughs> That's a perfect segue to our fly on the wall. I usually introduce him <laughs> as the best bud in the business. Uh, oh. David, are you there? That's there quite, he is. That's quite hey, the introduction yeah, yeah. there. There do you, he is. Do you want to see my face or do you want to see my no, I don't even. I didn't even know you had a head. Best bud in the business, my friend. <laughs> this is uh, a man who hates to be called doctor, even though he is a qualified doctor uh, specializing in pediatric oncology and hematology. Uh, the most uh, modest, humble, which, which way would you put it? He doesn't want anyone to call him doctor, even though he is a doctor. So for the rest of this interview, we'll call him David, but you guys can call me doctor. If he's not going to use it, sure. I'll take it. Someone might as well. Thank you, Johanna. David, you've been watching uh, the interview here. We're going to flip it around a bit. We, we usually have the, the musicians ask the other guest a question, but uh, watching that, do you have any questions or comments for the town pants? I don't. I, I didn't think to ask them any questions. I just want to commend, I you know, compliment them on what they're doing. I mean, I, I'm jealous in a way. I'm, I, I live in suburbia in, in Montreal, and I would just love to experience one of their concerts. And you know, you know, who doesn't love Celtic music? And nothing's better than live music. And and at the end of the day, you know, when people recount their experience about how they went through COVID, they're going to be talking about this. So I just, you know, hats off to you guys. <laughs> you. Did what you say that? hero? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think so. As a doctor, you know, it's, you've said it's, it's nice to see. Is it, do you think it's making a big difference to, uh, to morale of doctors overall to see all these great tributes like the town pants are doing on a nightly basis? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think everybody likes to be recognized for what they do especially during these difficult times. But, uh, you know, and it's not just healthcare workers. I think you're doing it for everyone who's kind of stepping up and putting their, if you want, their lives in some uh, danger, if you will. And that goes down to people cleaning the floors, uh, picking up garbage, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just the healthcare workers, but it takes a village to run this village. And what would you say about the... Uh... In Quebec, especially, they're, they're lightening um, restrictions as of, as of right now and by next week. What is the feeling out there in, in Montreal about, uh, about reintegrating in and, and sort of making social distancing? One word, trepidation. Trepidation. People nervous. are worried. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, know, you know, given my business, you know, we get the question every single day. I address the, the issue, you know, at least three times today already with patients. Um, it's a big unknown. Uh, the, the, the rationale is that kids aren't affected as seriously. A, they're not as affected as often or infected as often, and they don't get as, as seriously ill. Right, but then the teachers still have to go. Do you think it's yeah, a good Oh, absolutely. There's trepidation all around. And, uh, you know, I don't I heard know the how word, they're going to I heard the word the I, first time. You don't have to keep showing off. <laughs> 
All right. I honestly right. don't know how they're going to, you know, how do you keep kids socially distanced and washing their hands? And I, I well, don't know they, they generally do what they're told, don't they? <laughs> so you don't yes. have any, you guys don't have any kids yet then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We've taken it in a bit of a, a bit of a downer here, guys. Do you, could you play a quick song for us uh, to get sure. out? Sure, it's a tune we wrote called "Trepidation." You're gonna love Trepidation. it. Trepidation. Trepidation. Now, one, two, three. <laughs> Find yourself that there's a world for you Beyond the box you think you're in Don't believe the inner voice that says you can't Based on the places that you've been The person you were yesterday Doesn't have to be who you are today Just stay behind the wall that you built With just a masquerade Tear down the wall that you built for yourself yesterday. Be behind the doubt and fear you once had. It's all about today. It's all about to change. To head down the wall that you built for yourself yesterday. Be behind the doubt and fear you once had. It's all about to change. It's all about today. Don't accept your change, it's sad, but some prefer the lows. You know you're gonna trip and fall, but that's just the way it always goes. Up, get out, be who you're gonna be, and just don't be afraid to feel. Shoulds a load of guilt, bird, and no matter what you're going through, it's real. You built for yourself yesterday. Leave behind the doubt and fear you once had. It's all about today. It's all about to change. Head down the wall that you built for yourself yesterday. Leave behind the doubt and fear you once had. It's all about today. It's all about today. You built for yourself of yesterday. Be behind the doubt and fear you want that. It's all about today. It's all about to change. Head out the wall that you built for yourself of yesterday. Be behind the doubt and fear you want that. It's all about to change. It's all about today. We've had a lot of musical performances on this show. That is my favorite. And uh, you can tell the others too. I will. I'm telling Dan May. Dan May. Dan, tell Dan. Great. Yeah, tell Dan. That was great. Thank you so, so much. Thanks, Town Pants. Uh, best of luck with everything. And thank you so much, guys. Thanks for doing everything you're thank doing you. out there and around the world. And I, I can't wait to see you when the tour starts up again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for thank having you, us. David. Thank Cheers. you, Steve. Stay safe, thank guys. You. And it's killing me. Hello, David. Hello, Dr. Peter uh, Patterson. Oh, so, so you can Doctor, tell me doctor, but you screw up my name? Doc, doc, yeah, Dr. P, as we said. 
I like this. I'm going to be doctor for this interview. Uh, a few things to cover, but I was going to ask this question later, as you know, but David, uh, Dr. David, who uh, he hates it when I call him that, uh, attended my wedding years ago in St. Lucia. And at one point during that, um, walked into the wrong <laughs> hotel room uh, while my friend's wife was in the shower. And uh, have you recovered from that fully yet? Because she hasn't. She talks to me all the time about it. Uh, no, I, it, it wasn't long ago I recounted that story. <laughs> yeah. Quebec, currently, uh, as we speak, has the, the most cases of, of COVID. Why do you think that that, that that is, that there's the most cases in, in Quebec? There's probably a number of factors uh, I was looking into this. One of the things, and you know, I didn't even think about this one, is that when this thing was all just starting to ramp up, Quebec has its uh, school break a week or two before the rest of the country. Right. And so a bunch of people went off the floor of the States, what have you, or hotter, hot areas, and brought it back. And then everything started ramping up, you know, a week or two later everywhere. And meanwhile, people are walking around carrying this thing and probably spreading it all around. So that was probably one of the major factors. The other thing is, as you know, but the you know the long care, long-term care facilities, Quebec has more per capita than any other province. So and a lot, you know, the vast majority of the deaths in this province have come from uh, that population. Um, and then, the, and then the other thing is that the, the testing has been actually quite good in Quebec right. and widespread. So the more you look for it, the more you'll find. Let's try to end, if we could, on an optimistic note. As a, as a doctor, uh, is there an optimistic sign that we are, are going to get through this? Is there a science-based, <laughs> physician-based reason that <laughs> we should say, yes, we're going to get through this? Okay. Yes, because our race has not been decimated by disease before. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you're there, the big picture, yeah, that's that's uh, that's one way to look at it. So, uh, and we're a little more technolo technologically advanced than they were, you know, whatever, hundred, two, three hundred, four hundred years ago with other uh, pandemics or epidemics. So. Uh, <laughs> I am so glad you didn't go into greeting card writing because that, that just <laughs> that that sucks as a card. Hey, hey, our race hasn't been decimated before, so we'll, we'll, we'll probably be okay. Some of us are going to get through. David Mitchell, yes. thank you so, so much for doing this, my friend. Well, thank, thank you for inviting me. And uh, let's thank get you. the town. I hope I just didn't like wipe out your show off the podcast map. No, no, I think I did that when I say the world was ending earlier in the show. I don't know if we'll edit that out or not, but, um, <laughs> but let's, let's get the town pants out to Montreal when they're touring again and get, take in a show. What do you say? That would be fantastic. I'd love that. Thank you so much, right. my friend. Have a great rest take of your day. Take care of yourself. Good Thanks seeing you again. Bye-bye. And it's killing me. And that's all for this week. I want to thank our guests again so much, Dr. David Mitchell, as well as Johanna and Dwayne from The Town Pants. They have their Songs of Thanks t-shirts and bags for sale on their website. Go to songsofthanks.com with all proceeds going to St. Paul's Hospital. And if you want to keep following us, and we sure hope you do, see us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. All the information is right there. We'll hope to see you next week on The Steve Patterson Project. Thanks for watching. It's killing me.